Joe Trapelia, the well-regarded Democrat senator from Great Falls, sponsored Senate Bill 16. He introduced this just a few weeks after this governor was sworn in in 2005. He introduced Senate Bill 16. And he declared in no uncertain terms that the overarching purpose here was to prevent politicians from promoting their own personal political ambitions at taxpayer expense. When he went out on the street and when he went door to door at his own expense, his constituents in Cascade County were telling him, and he was a bit surprised by this, but he would he was hearing from the people. Why are we seeing their voices all the time for these public service announcements? I mean, sure, the, they're, they're promoting some event or some public cause or something, but we, we know what they're doing. They're putting their name, they're putting their voice, they're putting their image before the people. They're using our money to produce these, to distribute these, to run these, and it's unseemly. We want it to stop. Yeah. How can they get away with this under the current law? And your, your Honor, you know, as a state employee, most of the state employees understand, uh, given the Federal Hatch Act and Montana's Mini Hatch Act the version of it, state employees are forbidden from overtly soliciting support for a candidate or using any uh, taxpayer-funded facility, equipment, supply, or other resource to do this type of thing. And I think it makes pretty clear by the comments on both sides of the aisle, a bipartisan agreement, that members, elected officials, and I don't think it was exclusive to the executive branch, but elected officials previously on both, in both parties had found what appears to be a loophole and they, would, they were uh, finding some means to expend state funds for advertising or for public service announcements that were based on some hook, get out and vote, register early, those type of things. Clearly, maybe legitimate public uh, purposes behind that. But they were sick of it. And they noticed a proliferation of them uh, in the election cycles. And so, as Senator Trapila stated in both chambers when this bill was uh, presented and heard, this bill was narrowly tailored to prevent a candidate from using state funds for advertisements or for PSAs. It's a very simple, all-encompassing prohibition, except in one circumstance, parties agree that that circumstance doesn't exist here. Now that's not the end of the legislative history story, because as you know, even though he'd only been in office a few weeks, the governor sent members of the administration down to the legislature to urge an amendment to allow this city governor, who's now charged with this violation, they urged an amendment to allow him to discuss travel, to allow him to invite people to come to the state of Montana. That commentary, the, the debate on that amendment is illuminating, and it was rejected. And as Senator Joe Trapelia himself said, when asked by Blue Senator Cooney, isn't this going to have a chilling effect on legitimate functions of an officer, sitting officer, Senator Trapelia said, look, they have three and a half years to run PSAs. They're, this is for a few months prior to the election, and it serves an overarching public purpose of preventing these officers from expending taxpayer money on pretextual ads. So, uh, and again, this, this was adopted overwhelmingly by the legislature. Uh, Secretary of State Brad Johnson uh, testified to the agreement of all that this aspect of the incumbency was being abused.
abused, and that abuse had to stop, and the power of the incumbency had to be defunded to level the playing field and to preserve the um, integrity of the electoral process. So that's what's at stake here. I, I don't think there's any question on the facts before the court uh, as to what happened. Uh, I will provide you some proposed facts here, um, but I want to direct your attention now to the undisputed cover letter from uh, Ron Zeller. Uh, Your Honor, as you know, public service announcements and ads cost money. They don't produce themselves. They don't distribute themselves. And it costs money to do that. Here, the governor concedes that the money used to pay for the production and distribution of these ads derive from state funds. There, there's just no question about it. The money used for the production and distribution of these public service announcements derive from state funds. It's a clear violation of the statute, in my opinion, uh, and with deference to your earlier comments. Uh, and now to try, try to convince you of the clarity of that, I, I would like to um, point you to the Ron Zeller email of March 7, 2008. Your Honor, at the top of that email, it's, it's dubbed a public service announcement. Mr. Zeller knew it was a public service announcement. This court has to consider the public service announcement, and there's no legitimate question of fact but that this is a public service announcement. It is expressly identified as one of the prohibited acts, one of the prohibited um, acts of the uh, candidate under the under the statute. So there's when when my friend uh, discusses an op-ed piece. Public service announcement, uh, you know, I, I can, if, if you'd like, I could probably subpoena every news page editor, editorial page editor in the state, and they would bristle mightily at any suggestion that the opinion of the people or an op-ed piece is a mere public service announcement. Uh, I think that this is, I think that the alleged uh, lack of clarity as to what is meant by public service announcement, one is misplaced because by his own admission, Ron Zeller created one here. But two, these, these, the term is, is well, well understood. Um, it's allegedly for some public comment or public purpose. And uh, so, e e even assuming, I mean, the legislature has to be understood to recognize that some legitimate public purpose would surround the issuance of a public service announcement. Uh, it is not an op-ed piece. And I don't think that this parade of horribles or uncertainties that uh, the governor's council was trying to get you to follow are properly before this body. It's not your job to determine the full scope of all possible facts and all possible consequences. Rather, it's your job to apply the rule of law to the facts now before you. And let's talk for a minute about those undisputed facts. 